issues. Uh, he saw within uh, his society and the time and the, the amount of hurt and hopelessness that seemed to be everywhere. Someone listening to me already says, sounds familiar, sounds like the times we live in now. But Jesus did not allow those issues. He saw the problems that he pointed out uh, to be or to go unaddressed. No, he put a team together, 12 disciples, these frontline workers, uh, to go out and to deal with the problems uh, that he saw within the community. He uh, first, before send, sending them out, he equips them um, with the things that they would need in order to be effective. He gives them, and um, if I, you allow me to say it this way, uh, with some spiritual PPEs. He gives them uh, personal protection equipment because he knew that they would have to combat some forces that would come against them. And he wanted them to be well equipped to handle whatever would come their way. And so he gives them spiritual power. Notice, if you will, in the background of this text, Jesus gives the disciples some specific instructions as they were to go out and deal with the maladies and tragedies and situations they would encounter in the community. He first of all tells them, I want you to go to the lost sheep of Israel. Those are the house of Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I want you not to begin by trying to save the world. I want you to go into your own neighborhood. I want you to go amongst your own people. I want you to reach out to your cousins and them, your mama and them, your friends and them. I want you to reach out to those who are related to you by blood. I want you to start at home before you try to save the world. Second thing he does is he tells them, I want you as you go to preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want, the let, I want you to let them know that the kingdom of heaven in the person of Jesus Christ, me, the one that you are representing is here. I want you to go and preach the kingdom, preach Christ. That's your assignment as you go out. But even as you do that, thirdly, I want you uh, to, as you go, I want you to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. I want you to raise the dead. And I want you to also deliver those who are dealing with demons. Yes, I want you to cast out demons. Can I park there for just a moment? He's telling them, I don't want you to think uh, that you have the power to destroy a demon because that power belongs to me. But I do want you to know you have the power to displace a demon. You don't have the power to destroy a demon because I have demon destroying power. But as one of my representatives, please understand that you have the power to displace a demon. I want you to go and as you go and you encounter people who are dealing with a demonic, I want you to let them know that because you are here, they don't have to deal with the demonic anymore because now that you are here, you have the power and the ability to set them free. Deal with the demonic by displacing the demonic from those who are under demonic oppression. But even as you do that, I want you to go and I want you to travel light. I don't want you to take any extra clothes. I don't want you to take any gold or silver or copper into your money bags. I don't want you, as a matter of fact, to bring any money. I don't want you to bring any extra clothing or luggage. Why? Because as you go, as you are going on this assignment, I want you to depend on me, watch this, as your source to use the right people as a resource. Yeah. You missed what I said. Here it is. I don't want you to have to worry about clothes or money or any of those things. No, I want you to rely on the hospitality of people, but not 
just any people. I want you to trust me to depend on me as your source to use the right people as a resource. I don't want you to just go to anybody and everybody. I want you to go to the right somebodies. And I want you to know that as you go to the right somebodies, those right somebodies are, are not people who I want to make you, who are people I want to make you feel like you are beholden to them uh, because of how they bless you. No, the right people are going to be the people that I use as a resource who will not try to act like they are your source. Okay. You'll know they are the right people because they will understand I'm a resource yeah. and not a source. I'm a resource that God is using to be a blessing to you. And so here it is. He says, I want you to travel light. But as you go, understand that as you go from city to city, from house to house, everybody's not going to receive you. Yes, even as you go from one town to the next and you go from one home to the next, understand that even though I have sent you, not everyone is going to be receptive to you. But here's what I want you to do. I don't want you to force yourself on people who ain't feeling you. Oh, you missed what I said. He says, as you go, I don't want you to force yourself on people who ain't feeling you. Here it is. I don't want you to miss this. Please understand this, child of God, that sometimes rejection is good. Sometimes rejection is good because we don't want to end up in a place where somebody ain't feeling us and we're trying to force ourselves on some people who ain't feeling us. And God is saying, no, don't try to force yourself on anybody. If they ain't feeling you, then shake the dust from your feet and keep on moving. I wonder if there's someone who understands the blessing of rejection. The blessing of rejection is that you don't spend too much time, waste too many moments, and take too much of your life away, wasting it, trying to get some people who ain't feeling you to feel you. No, no. Just thank God for the blessing of rejection. Somebody needs to type that right Right now, there's a blessing in reject. Not all rejection is negative. Some rejection is positive. Some rejection is for your good. Some rejection is for your benefit. Why? Because it's going to keep you from unnecessary time wasted, keep you from wasting tears and having headaches and, and from losing your mind. I wonder if there's somebody who looks back in this season of Thanksgiving and says, Lord, I just want to thank you for some people who didn't receive me because if they had received me I'd still be in a state of despair. I would still be destroying my life. I'd still be angry and upset. I'd still be losing sleep. I'd still be upset. My stomach would still be turning. Why? Because I was wasting time trying to force myself on somebody who wasn't even feeling me. Lord, I thank you that you finally gave me enough sense to get myself together, to hold my head up, to remember who I am, to not waste my time on somebody who ain't even feeling me. I'm forcing myself. I'm calling. I'm texting. I'm showing up. And I'm trying to get them to feel me. But I've learned now in my life it's better for me to hold on to my dignity rather than to try to force myself on somebody who ain't feeling me. Somebody needs to hear what I'm saying. There's somebody during this season of Thanksgiving who's thanking God for the rejection. Yes, I know it sounds kind of cultural. I know it doesn't sound a real positive, but there's somebody who's watching me and said, no, pastor, you talking right. It's a positive. During this season of Thanksgiving, because for some of you, that's how you spent last Thanksgiving. And you made up in your mind for this Thanksgiving. This Thanksgiving is going to be different. I'm not going to sit by the phone. I'm not going to sit and wait and see who shows up. I'm going to thank God 
I'm going to thank God for my deliverance. Thank God for my liberation. Thank God for my freedom. Thank God for my just bringing me to a place where I finally got beyond trying to force myself on somebody who ain't even feeling me. No, Jesus said, everybody's not going to receive you. Everyone's not going to welcome you. Everyone's not going to want you on their team. Everyone's not going to want you to be a part of their group. Everyone's not going to welcome you into their home. But here's what I want you to do. As I'm sending you, I don't want you to become disillusioned and discouraged to the point where you begin to assume that just because some people won't receive you, nobody will receive you. I don't want you to get to the point where you begin to feel as though there are no good people left. I don't want you to get to a point where you become cynical and suspect, where you begin to look at everybody as being trifling and trite. I don't want you to get to a place where you begin to write off all humanity. I don't want you to get to a place where you begin to assume nobody can be trusted, ain't nobody no good. I don't want you to get to a place where you begin to look at everybody the same way. I don't want you to begin to assume that there is no good, there are no good people left in the world. No. Here's what I want you to understand that yes, there are some people who are going to reject you, but at the same time, there are some people who are going to receive you. And those are the people I want you to focus on. Those are the people I want you to concentrate on. Those are the people I want you to think about. There are some good people. I feel like preaching that. So there are some good people left in the world. And here's what I want you to do because now I'm at the city limits of my text. I want you to notice what Jesus says to the disciples here at the end of this 10th chapter about good people. Notice what he says in verse 40. He says, he who receives you receives me. And who, he who receives me receives him who sent me. Notice the key word that leaps out to me in this 40th verse is the word he. He says, he who receives you receives me. And he that receives me receives him that sent me. Here it is. Something you need to know about good people, and that is, don't be, be careful that you don't try to prematurely point them out. Notice that Jesus says, he. Notice that he doesn't name names. He says, he. He doesn't give a name. They are yet unknown. He says he. Why is that important, preacher? Because you need to understand and trying to figure out who's good people, you got to understand that sometimes you won't know who good people are until you have a problem. This is why you can't prematurely point out who's a good person because you don't know who's a good person oftentimes until you have a problem. Some of you have prematurely pointed some people out as good people and then you had a problem and those people didn't show up in the midst of your problem. And so Jesus said, don't make the mistake of prematurely pointing out people, calling some people good people. When their, when their goodness has not been tested. See, it has to go through a test. It's something called trials. It is through those trials that you discover who's good people, who's a reliable person, who can be trusted. And notice, again, Jesus says he. He doesn't name names. And that's why I say you can't prematurely point out people because he doesn't name names. That means that the names of these individuals will only be known as you go through life's journey. See, there are some good people out there that God wants to partner with you, that he wants to make part of your life, that you don't even know who those people are until you run into a place called problem. When you go into a situation or as you're journeying through life that God along the way sends some people who will come along and be a blessing to you and who will receive you. I wonder if there's somebody who understands what I'm saying that and what I'm really trying to get you to glean 
from this text this morning is that Jesus, in my opinion, does not name names so that you won't begin to look at who is and who is not before the right time. Yes, have you ever found yourself calling somebody good people and then you had a bad problem and then they turn out not to be so good but then that person who you didn't think was that tight with you, close with you well, therefore you turn out to be someone that was your backbone in the midst of your burden. I wonder if there's somebody who learned some good things about some people while you were going through a season of distress and grief. You learn some good things. You learn how much they care. You learn how much they love you. You learn how much they would be there. You learn how much of a friend they were. I wonder if there's somebody who says you're talking about me right now. I want to thank God for some good people. You know some good people. You don't even once again, you don't know their name. You just have a situation and here they come. There's some people whose names you can't even call. Just think back over this year. Just think back over 2020. Just think back over all the things that we've been through in this year alone and think about the number of people who have stepped up to the plate. There's something that I, I do believe about everybody going through something at the same time because when everybody's going through something at the same time it makes most of us more sensitive to other people's situation because when you're going through a situation you're more sensitive about somebody else's situation and sometimes it takes God allowing you to go through a situation to be more sensitive about someone else's situation can I tell you I do believe that part of this pandemic one of the lessons we learned is we got to be there for one another I do believe that God has used even this moment to give us a more sensitive spirit that we're not so quick to judge and put people down anymore. No, we're willing to step up to the plate because we need one another. Good people, good people, good people, good people are not people that you will, uh, you will know from the beginning, but you will learn as you go. As you go, God will send some good people. He that receives uh, me uh, will uh, receives you, receives me, and he that receives me receives him who sent me. But here it is. Can I push the text? He says, not only that, in verse 41, he that receives a, a prophet in the name of a prophet receives a prophet's reward and he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man receives a righteous man's reward. Let's unpack that for just a moment. The key word in there is receive and the other key word is reward. Let's look at that word reward first if you don't mind. Reward means to appropriately compensate someone for their decision or action. Yes, the word reward here means to appropriately compensate someone for their decision or action. What is the decision that is being made? The decision that is being made is to be a blessing to someone because they are a prophet or to be a blessing to someone because they are a righteous person. Don't miss that. He's not just talking about being good to everybody in a general sense, but he says, no, he's talking about those who are good to those that God uses. Yes, he says, they shall receive a prophet's reward and a righteous man's reward. Now, one of the things from this text we must understand is uh, it's unclear what the reward is and exactly what everyone will receive. But if you allow me a homiletical license this morning and allow me even this morning to sermonically suggest even at this point that I do believe that one of the things uh, that one could receive for being a blessing to the prophet or being a blessing to a righteous man is watch this. I believe one thing you can receive for being a blessing to the prophet is according to the text reading chapter 10 10 is you can benefit from their uh, from their peace. You can benefit from their 
peace. What do you mean you can benefit from their peace? You can benefit from their peace because remember now, when Jesus sent the disciples out, when he gave them this assignment, he told them, I want you to go into the homes. I want you, of the people that you minister to, I want you to rely on their hospitality. I, that's why I don't want you to bring anything extra. No, I'm going to send you to the right people and those people are going to be a blessing to you. I want those individuals to be a blessing to you. Now, here's what I want you to do, though. When you enter into the house of someone who receives you, after greeting the people in that house and you find that house worthy, I want your peace. I want you to put your peace on that house. Yes, I want you to put your peace, place your peace over that house. Did y'all catch that? He says, he says, your peace. I'm in verse 13 for those who want to take a peek. He says, I want to, your peace to be upon that house. Don't miss that. Here it is, child of God. I want you to understand you have power over your peace. Yeah. You better hear me as we are preparing even during this Thanksgiving season. You have power over your, your peace. Stop allowing people to have power over your peace when God has given you power over your peace. Stop allowing people to steal your peace. Stop allowing people to take your peace. God says, I've given you power over your peace. You have power. Is there someone who understands that, that I'm taking my power back this morning because I've allowed too many people to steal me, to steal my peace and rob me of my peace. If there's one thing somebody said they're going to do in this season is I'm going to have some peace. I wonder if there's somebody who says I, I may not be as prosperous as I desire to be right now, but one thing is I'm going to have some peace. I've had a, a hellish year. I've had all kind of situations I've had to encounter and overcome, but if there's one thing I've made up my sanctified mind I'm going to do is I'm going to have some peace. Yes, I've made up my mind that it's going to be peace in this house. Do I have a witness? And notice he says, I want you to place your peace on over that house. That means that as believers, we are dispensers of peace. Don't, don't, don't miss that. We are dispensers of peace. In other words, when I show up, I don't come alone. When I show up, I bring peace with me. Don't tell me about the chaos. Don't tell me about all the drama. All that may have been going on before I arrived or even in the midst of me being there. But because I'm in this house, there's going to be some peace in this house because I am a dispenser of peace. I wonder if there's somebody who is a dispenser of peace, who pours peace over the house, who brings calm over the house, who eliminates the chaos, eliminates the drama. There's going to be peace in this. I wonder if there's someone who's learned how to smile in the midst of struggles, to hold your head up when things get heavy because you carry a peace that surpasses all understanding. Some people don't understand you and some people still trying to figure you out. It is because you have an internal peace that keeps you moving forward. I wonder if there's somebody who wants to thank God for giving you that kind of peace. When I'm in the house, there's going to be peace. Can I help someone even as we're getting ready for the turkey dinner on Thursday? Yes, there's going to be peace in this house uh, that we ain't gonna bring up old stuff we ain't gonna bring up things from the past uh, we gonna drop our differences we ain't gonna talk about who didn't do what who got hurt when what did no that, that's gonna be peace uh, in this house there's gonna be peace at dinner there's gonna be peace during dessert there's gonna be peace as we watch the game there's gonna be peace as we sit and fellowship uh, and we gonna have some peace in this house uh, and I want you to know there will be peace if you bring some peace with you. Somebody say, I'm bringing some peace. I ain't bringing a pie, but I'm bringing some peace. I ain't bringing a turkey, but I'm bringing some peace. No, I don't have any cranberry sauce, but I'm bringing some peace. I don't have a pumpkin pie, but I'm bringing some peace. Is there somebody who says, when I show up, I'm bringing some peace with me. Yes, is there 
somebody watching me this morning who says if there's anything I want as I'm coming down to the end of this year and we're now celebrating a time of Thanksgiving I want to thank God for my peace and I want to thank God for allowing me to be a peace dispenser do I have a witness in here we're going to pray for peace we're going to believe God for peace we're going to believe there'll be no more turmoil there'll be no more problems there'll be no more chaos is there somebody in the house who says this year is going to be different yes this year is going to be different this year is going to be different because I'm going to be different this year is going to be different because I made up in my mind that I'm not going to feed into foolishness I'm going to make up my mind that I'm going to bring peace with me do I have a witness in here somebody thank God for peace somebody thank God for peace now here's what you need to get to you can't give peace unless you have peace y'all miss what I said you can't give peace unless you have peace somebody says I got it 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 you know that you have it. I know that I have it. Because when I look over my life and I think things over and I think about what I've been through and there's some things that I've been through that could have made me bitter but instead of making me bitter it's made me better. I'm a better person because of my internal peace. Do I have a witness in here? Can I for just one moment and say somebody, somebody somebody ought to be glad that you got peace now because you used to carry a peace somebody ought to be glad now that you have peace because you have peace they ain't got to worry about you tripping, flipping out speaking in other tongues because you got peace now if there's somebody in the house say Lord You will receive a prophet's reward. What does the prophet bring? The prophet brings peace. For when he enters into the house, Jesus said, let your peace rest upon the house. Somebody say, let it rest, let it rest. Let it rest, let it rest. God, bring peace. Sing your peace. Do I have a witness? But not only. Not only do good people benefit from peace, but good people also benefit from the prophet's power. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Can I call up the Old Testament for just one moment? And you remember in the Old Testament, it was the prophet Elijah who went to the home of the Shunammite woman. And when they arrived at the home, the Shunammite woman, he discovered that this woman was hospitable. She made the prophet comfortable. She built him a place to stay where he could relax and recover while he was on his journey. And because she made him comfortable, he then rewarded her. Yes, somebody. He then rewarded her and her husband who were a childless couple with the promise of a child. He then said, what I'm going to do is because you've been a blessing to me, I'm saying God is going to be a blessing to you and you're going to have a child. Do I have a witness? Because that's what will happen when you are a blessing to the prophet or the man Somebody say it's a blessing to be a blessing, huh? but it's not just a blessing huh? to be a blessing, huh? but it's a blessing when you can bless those huh? that God is using huh? in his service. Huh? Do I have a witness in here? Huh? The Bible says huh? that if you huh, receive a prophet, huh? then you shall receive huh? a prophet's reward. Huh? But if you receive a righteous man, you'll receive 
receive a righteous man's reward. What are you saying, Jesus? Jesus is saying in a general sense that if you receive godly people, if you bless godly people, then you will benefit from that relationship. How do I benefit from that? What is the reward? Well, see, there's something about being a blessing to godly people. It's godly people don't forget how it is they've been blessed. Godly people will then go back and then be a blessing to those who've been a blessing to them. All I'm trying to say about the godly people is they haven't forgotten. Look at somebody say, I have not forgotten. I did not forget all that God has used other people to do in my life. Is there someone who says, I don't have Like 
everybody forgot. But God says, I want you to know, I never forgot. I saw what you did. And I'm going to reward you for what you've done. Is there somebody in the house who will lean over to somebody and just say, keep on walking and keep on living. For God has seen your work. So there's at least one <laughs> because you say I'm a good person, I'm good people, I'm good people. And we do thank God, we do thank God for those whom he has sent and those whom he has used and even those he's using now. It's been a very trying year. We've experienced much, gone through a lot. Let's be honest. We got to this place with the Lord's help and also because of some good people. Some good people. No, you're not an island. You didn't do it all by yourself. You didn't get here alone. No, God, you side of us to help us, to receive us, to hold us up and enable us to get through the most difficult and darkest of times. God, we thank you even in the season of Thanksgiving for all the people that you have put around us and during the season of Thanksgiving as we prepare now for a Thanksgiving different from other Thanksgivings because of what's happening within our world because of a virus that has gone global. God, we thank you in the season of Thanksgiving for those who you've placed alongside of us to help us through this season. And even for those who have suffered loss, those who have lost loved ones, those who've had to bury family members. God, we thank you for those people that you sent, once again, good people who helped to 
hold us up, held our hand, gave us a call, sent us a text, stood by us, prayed for us, lifted us up, put a smile on our face, and gave us the strength we needed to stand. God, we thank you. Thank you for good people. Good people. Not everyone we're reminded in this Thanksgiving season is bad. There are some big, beautiful, bold people you're placed around us. Don't mind being a blessing. Thank you, God. We're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful, God. We're grateful. As we come to the close of this service, again, we give you opportunity to sow a seed. If you desire to sow a seed, thank you so much. Thank you for refreshing us. Thank you for taking the time to give a gift and sow a seed. Thank you for every gift, large and small, that makes a difference. And we thank God for those who heard the word, who have been touched by the word, someone who's come to say the knowledge of Jesus Christ is someone who's renewed their commitment to God and someone who's made a decision I'm going to continue to be a good person because I know that God is going to reward me for what I've done thank you thank you we close on that note this morning with a thank you would you just help us sing as we close? Yeah. You it is a season of Thanksgiving. Lord. Yes. This is something everybody knows. Yes. You. Go in peace, go in peace.